Hello, my name is Michael Diaz and I'm a CSU Monterey Bay alum. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this workshop. It is always a pleasure to give back to the CSU community since it has had and continues to have a tremendous impact on my journey as a scientist. I was asked to share with you today how the course-based undergraduate research experience or CURE I participated in at CSUMB impacted my journey. So I'll start by describing some research experiences that I had before enrolling the CURE at CSUMB and then follow with what I believe are some short-term and longer-term impacts of my participation. And finally, I'll share where my scientific journey has taken me most recently during the ongoing pandemic. I'll start my story at CSUMB, as this is where I began taking greater strides toward becoming a scientist. While at CSUMB, I participated in several sponsored research experiences for undergraduates or REUs, and my first was at Texas A&M University. At the time, and much to the dismay of my parents and advisors alike, I was fascinated with dead bodies. And to be clear, I was intrigued by the ecology surrounding the decomposition process. So for the summer, I joined a lab that sampled insects from decomposing carcasses, and we were interested in ecological questions about short-lived food resources, somewhat like a dead body under a hot sun, but also how we might use this data more effectively to determine how long someone has been dead. This continues to be an important forensics tool. I returned to California and continued performing research, this time at the USDA, where I learned analytical chemistry techniques to identify and develop eco-friendly pesticides. These techniques were critical to questions being asked in the forensic space, like what are the chemical signatures or volatiles produced during decomposition, and what is the biological source? This latter question, the biological source, was the focus of my next research experience at the University of Dayton in Ohio. The group I worked with was interested in bacteria present at each stage of decomposition. And what we found was that although decomposition was a continuum, there were discrete stages that had representative bacterial species. Not only did this have important forensics implications, but also it could help us begin to tease apart how animals are attracted to dead bodies. Simply put, dead bodies are stinky, and their stink can be smelled up to a mile away by some animals, and it could be that bacteria are the key to this attraction. So at this point in my journey, I had a reasonable amount of field ecology training, but I had limited molecular training. So I returned to CSUMB, and this is when I enrolled in the CURE to begin to fill that void. The CURE I participated in was structured around the Genomics Education Partnership out of Washington University in St. Louis. In a nutshell, we use bioinformatics to manually annotate draft genome data for Drosophila species. In preparing for this workshop, I reflected back on this experience and tried to think of three words that describe my experience the best. And these included challenging, collaborative, and rewarding. It was challenging because I had never really put my molecular training from lectures into practice, so I was rusty with some of my textbook knowledge. It was also challenging because this was real research. So while we had a framework to work off of and perfectly packaged example problems to reference, the real annotations were complex and required several layers of analysis to produce an annotated gene model for submission. This experience revealed once again to me a truth I had become accustomed to through other research experiences. The real science is messy, and a far cry from how it is introduced to us in the textbooks. I remember this also being a revelation to my peers who hadn't performed research before. This brings me to my next word, collaborative. In this course, we worked in teams. Having my peers as colleagues as opposed to a graduate student, postdoc, or senior scientist was a clear distinction from a traditional REU. I had more confidence in my ability to help my peers, but also didn't fear admitting when I was lost. I remember leaning heavily on my classmates as we worked through our data sets. I also recall one of my classmates lamenting that this course was hard because they didn't have any past research experiences, but I reminded them that this was my fourth research experience and I was struggling too. For me, the cure also lowered the stakes for performance since the labs I worked in for my REUs were labs I was considering for graduate school, so I often pushed myself to my limits. But importantly, it didn't eliminate the importance of our work. Knowing that our work could make it into a publication gave me and my peers a greater sense of ownership, which brings me to my final word, rewarding. The fact that the reward of our efforts was tangible made it easy to feed into a reward system in our brains. Some of us even performed additional annotations as independent projects after completing this course, as the prospect of our contributions getting published was that exciting. The cure was additionally rewarding for me because I was fortunate to be selected as a TA and I went to Washington University to receive training from the GEP team. This experience was unique because while I was only an undergraduate student, I was getting trained side by side with faculty members from around the country. 
And even if only for a brief moment we were on a level playing field, it gave me a lot of confidence moving forward that becoming a scientist was the right career choice. So when I returned to CSUMB to TA the cure, I really immersed myself in the role as a TA, and I got to see things I had missed being on the receiving end of mentorship. Moments like changes in mindset where students begin to believe in themselves, and then even seeing them go on to help others. And this is what ultimately was the most rewarding part for me. The cure was also an inflection point in my training. After this course, my research interest shifted toward molecular biology. I joined another REU at UC Santa Cruz, where we studied Helicobacter pylori and were asking fundamental molecular questions about bacterial movement or chemotaxis. After graduating from CSUMB, I went to graduate school at UC Irvine, where my thesis work focused on the biochemistry of RNA editing, which was a far cry from my early interest in decomposition. The cure also paid off in grad school in two additional ways. It obviously gave me critical insight on how to mentor students working through a complex project, much like the undergraduate students who supported me during my thesis work. But it also presented a successful structure that I could reference for my TA ships in grad school. I was required to create discussion material and quizzes for students, and I challenged myself to create content that pushed students to analyze and interpret data, and use that information to make decisions about complex questions. This was an attempt to mirror, in part, the Bloom structure of the GEP Cure material. The result was that I was a top-rated TA, and students walked away from my sessions with confidence in their ability to apply the skills that we practice to new situations, instead of simply just memorizing content. After finishing my PhD in 2018, I was hired as a field application scientist by Analytic Yena, a biotechnology manufacturer of everything from thermocyclers to mass spectrometers. I get to interface with a diversity of scientists from basic to applied research and academic to clinical laboratories. Most recently, the pandemic has shifted my role to focus mainly on getting clinical testing laboratories up and running with our COVID-19 diagnostic workflows in the U.S. and around the world. My cure training has come in handy here as well. The level of expertise varies from lab to lab, so the needs of my customers or trainees vary considerably, which requires me to adjust my training on the fly and in some cases create instructional content. I'm just thankful to help in some small way during the pandemic, which has also been extremely rewarding. With that, I would like to end by thanking all my advisors along the way that supported me in my journey and continue to support me. And thank you for listening.